They shouldn't be here. Not in this desert. Not with this DNA. A tribe draped in indigo, veiled in silence, riding the bones of an ancient Sahara. Yet their blood tells a story that doesn't belong here. Not entirely. The Tuareg, known as the free people of the sands. But freedom, it seems, isn't the only thing they've carried through the centuries. Because inside their cells is Europe. More of it than you'll find in some Europeans. Haplogroups whispered from Iberia, etched into their mother's mitochondrial lines, still pulsing through nomads who've never seen the Atlantic. And then there's the Beja, a people far to the east, across deserts and memory. Their DNA matches. So now the contradiction stands naked in the sun. How can a tribe, isolated in the Sahel, wrapped in Berber myths, speak with genetic tongues foreign to its story? Their history says Berber, but their genome murmurs something older, stranger, almost impossible. And if you follow those murmurs, they don't lead to temples or scrolls. They lead to climate ghosts and vanished rivers, to a time when the Sahara was green. They lead to her, Tin Heinen, the ancestral queen whose footsteps, real or myth, still echo through Tuareg songs. Her grave still stands in the Ahagar Mountains. But her origins? Lost. Maybe intentionally. Because something is being hidden in this blood. Something that survived conquests, slavery, colonization, but not erasure. And so we're left with the question. Not just who the Tuareg are, but how they came to carry the genetic scars of continents. If North Africa is a crossroad, then the Tuareg are the footprints no one was meant to find. Subscribe if you want the stories the textbooks never told. Because the Sahara might not be a barrier. It might be a buried highway. And we're just now learning where it leads. The Sahara we know today is a graveyard of heat. But once, long before the dunes, there were lakes, forests, rain. And in the middle of that vanished paradise, people, walking, trading, living, Long before history thought they could, we were taught the Sahara was always a wall, a dry divide between worlds, but the bones beneath its sands tell another story. They've uncovered a people, ancient, pastoral, sun-darkened travelers, and in their DNA, something almost unrecognizable, a genetic signal, 90% strong, unique to them, almost untouched by sub-Saharan or Levantine blood, a lineage not found in Europe. Not even in Egypt, just there, frozen in time, at a site called Takarkori. And here's the twist. Today, that genome is nearly gone, extinct, erased by deserts and time, except for a single trace. The Tuareg, nomads wrapped in indigo and silence, still moving across the Sahara like ghosts of an older world. And in their cells, that same buried lineage flickers to life. How? Why them? The green Sahara should have erased itself when the rain stopped. But somehow, the Tuareg carried its blood forward. Through sandstorms, slave raids, colonial erasure, it didn't vanish. It survived, inside a people no one expected to still be here. So now the question is no longer, what happened to the Sahara? It's, what happened to the others? Because if this lineage lived on, hidden in the Tuareg, where else might it be waiting? You wouldn't expect it snowborn blood in the veins of desert queens. But here, under Saharan suns, a contradiction sleeps. A nomadic people, skin kissed by dust, veiled in indigo, yet carrying a maternal lineage that traces not to the Nile, not to Arabia, but to the icy refuges of ancient Iberia. Haplogroup H1, not just present dominant, 61% in some Tuareg lineages, the highest known anywhere on earth. How? How does a matrilineal tribe, one that lives off camel milk and salt caravans, descend from women shaped by post-glacial forests, not sand? The answer isn't simple migration. It's evolution in place. New subclades, H1V, H1X, found only in North Africa. Mutations that never reached Europe. Markers that whisper, we didn't just arrive here, we changed here. Their ancestors came across stone and water, but their daughters stayed adapted, endured, and now, centuries later, this frozen Iberian echo still beats inside the Tuareg, through mothers, through daughters, through stories never written. But here's what haunts geneticists. They see Europe. They see Africa. 
but they don't see the Near East. No markers of the Great Neolithic Wave. No signature of a Levant's farming diaspora that rewrote the DNA of half the world. The Tuareg missed it. Or maybe they were missed by it. And that absence, more than any presence, begs the question, what shielded this tribe from a migration that touched everyone else? What kept their maternal history untouched? It's what's missing that shocks the most. Across North Africa, the Neolithic left its genetic fingerprints, lineages tied to the farming revolution, to the rise of cities, to the first written names of gods. But not in the Tuareg. In them, the signal vanishes. No U6. No JT. None of the haplogroups that swept in from the Middle East with goats, grain, and fire. Instead, silence. A genetic ghost town where civilization should have left its mark. And that silence is loud. Because the Tuareg didn't absorb the DNA of the plow. They didn't fold into the tidal wave of agriculture and empire. Somehow, they stayed on the edges, watching it all unfold, untouched. While the world was busy planting roots, they kept moving. While others built walls, they followed stars. They remained hunters of horizon lines, herders of emptiness, carriers of blood older than farms. It's not just unusual, it's defiant. Their very existence says, We remember something the rest of you forgot. But how did they escape it? How did this tribe, stranded between two continents, resist a transformation that rewrote the DNA of nearly every other population? The answers might lie in the way they lived, or in the men who carried their names forward. Because if the maternal line dodged the Neolithic, what did the fathers preserve? In the deep silence of the Sahara, something unexpected divides the Tuareg, not language, not culture, but chromosomes. Across Libya and Mali, the pattern is strong. The Y DNA speaks loudly. EM81, what scientists call the Berber marker, etched into the paternal line like a birthright. But go east, toward Niger, and that signal fades. Suddenly, it's different. Only 11% carry E. M81 there. Instead, another lineage rises, E1B1A, a genetic thread more common in sub-Saharan Africa. The same people. The same blue veils. The same desert winds. But in their blood, the quiet fracture. And this isn't just about DNA. It's about how they lived. The Tuareg don't pass inheritance through fathers. They trace it through mothers, matrilineal descent, preserved like sacred law. Add in endogamy, caste-based roles, tribal isolation, and what you get is more than cultural tradition. You get a genetic boundary. Caravans crossed continents, trading salt and gold. But even those routes, wide as they were, didn't wash away the genetic walls inside Tuareg society. Foreign genes came in, yes but only through narrow gates, because this was a people both open and closed, travelers of vast distances, yet guardians of internal lines that rarely bent, and now were left staring at a split, not in tribe, not in name, but in the fathers who passed their chromosomes forward. Why? What happened in Niger that didn't happen in Libya or Mali? And what does this genetic fracture reveal about the forces, ancient and unseen, that shaped the Tuareg from within? It doesn't make sense at first. The Tuareg, desert-bound, Berber-speaking, etched into the fabric of North Africa. And yet their DNA points east, far east, to the Beja of Sudan. A different land, a different language, but a hidden kinship that no map could explain. Geneticists didn't expect this. They thought the Tuareg would match their Maghribi cousins, coastal Berbers, shaped by the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. But instead, the genome turned its face toward the Red Sea. And suddenly, a buried thread began to surface. The Beja and the Tuareg, split by 5,000 years. Two tongues, both born of the Afrosiatic root. And yet, somewhere, deep in time, they walked a shared road. It's the kind of mystery only DNA remembers. The kind history forgets. And then, her name emerges. Tin Heinen, the mother of the Tuareg a queen whose tomb still sleeps in the highlands of the Ahagar, cloaked in legend, carved in stone. Some say she came from Tafalot, riding south with her followers, carving a kingdom out of sand. But no one really knows who she was, or where she was from. What if the Beja connection isn't just science? What if it's memory? A memory passed down not in words, but in chromosomes, in lineages, 
in mitochondrial whispers, because if that eastern signal is real, if the Tuareg truly carry a genetic echo of the Beja, then the tale of a lone queen crossing the Sahara might be more than myth. It might be the turning point, the moment one woman's journey rewrote the bloodline of a people. But was it just her? Or is there more to this legacy than even legend dares to tell? It's one of the strangest truths in genetics. Two Tuareg villages, just miles apart, can carry DNA profiles as different as people on opposite continents. Same language, same customs, same sun, but under the surface, a fracture, quiet, invisible, written not by history books, but by isolation. In Libya, Tuareg groups show a startling uniformity, almost eerily consistent genetic signatures, as if one small group's DNA was pressed into every generation that followed, but moves south into the Sahel, and the picture changes. Suddenly, diversity blooms. New haplogroups appear. The code becomes more tangled, more layered, like windblown sand reshaped by unseen forces. It's not random. It's drift. Genetic drift. A slow, quiet force that rewrites bloodlines when populations remain small, closed, and cut off. And in the Sahara, cut off as normal. Villages separated by dunes become islands. A single ancestor becomes a genetic anchor. Mutations become markers. Bottlenecks become identity. And sometimes survival itself gets coded in. Tuareg herders are unusually lactose tolerant, a rare trait in much of Africa. They digest milk like Northern Europeans. Some carry odd hemoglobin patterns. Others, rare enzyme traits. Not disease. Not flaws. Adaptations. Signs that the desert didn't just shape their culture. It sculpted their cells. And that's the haunting part. If just a few centuries of isolation could shift entire genetic landscapes, what deeper forces have yet to reveal their signature? What unseen patterns lie beneath this living map of blood and sand still waiting to surface? They shouldn't look like this. Not on paper. Not in charts. Not in genetic trees. Not in the mirror of modern ancestry. But the Tuareg do. When scientists plot the world's genomes, most dots fall where you expect. North Africans tilt toward the Levant. Sub-Saharans group tight. Europeans cluster clean. But the Tuareg? They float alone. Their autosomal DNA doesn't sit comfortably in Africa. It leans west, toward Iberia. More European in some strands than even populations of the Middle East. And yet, they're not European. They're not Arab. They're not a bridge. They're an island. A mirror held between two continents, reflecting neither fully and both partially. On PCA plots, the visual maps of our genes, they appear apart. Not because they drifted, but because something held them still. That stillness wasn't silence. It was memory. The Tuareg genome remembers migrations others forgot. It preserved pathways others abandoned. It absorbed selectively, held carefully, and in doing so, became a living fossil of population movement, a human archive. But archives don't survive without resistance. The Tuareg faced conquest, Islamization, French colonial rule, post-colonial borders that tried to break their nomadic identity. Yet somehow, the genome stayed intact. So now the question lingers, not just in the science, but in the silence between maps. How did this mirror survive the shattering? What protected it when so many others cracked? Some genes never moved on, while the rest of the world changed, shifted, migrated, collided. The Tuareg held something still. Inside their mitochondrial DNA, scientists found a signal. Ancient, undisturbed, a lineage called M1A2A. And when they sequenced it, across the entire genome, it hadn't changed in over 8,000 years. No mutations, no divergence, as if time itself forgot to knock. That kind of stasis is unheard of in human genetics. Populations move, mix, adapt. But not here. Not in these veins. Why? Because the Sahara, for all its vastness, is both path and prison. It lets traitors pass. But it traps the bloodlines that stay. And the Tuareg, semi-nomadic, matrilineal, resistant to assimilation, became a vault. Not just of culture, but of code. Their genome didn't just survive. It remembered. It remembered a time before empires, before the alphabet, 
before the word Africa meant anything at all, a time when borders didn't exist and neither did nations. This isn't just a curiosity. It's a revelation, because if their mitochondria can echo unbroken from the early Holocene, then maybe identity, real identity, doesn't come from what's added. Maybe it comes from what's preserved. And in the Tuareg, that preservation runs deeper than any map, any flag, any story we were taught. So the question remains, what other people, quietly walking among us, carry that kind of silence in their blood? They weren't supposed to be this way. A desert tribe, halfway between continents, carrying lineages from places they've never seen, yet missing the ones history insists they should have. The Tuareg don't just exist. They challenge. They unsettle everything we thought we knew about race, migration memory, because their DNA doesn't follow the rules. It skips the Neolithic wave, echoes ancient Iberia, reflects the Beja more than Berbers, and still holds something no textbook ever taught us. Continuity, not of empire, not of language, but of blood, through climate shifts, invasions, colonial lines redrawn in dust. They preserve something older than names, something older than borders, and maybe that's the part we keep missing. That identity isn't what we see on a passport. It's what survives, unspoken, unbroken, when everything else is taken away. So ask yourself, what's buried in your DNA? What ancient path still lingers in the silence between your chromosomes? Because if the Tuareg could carry 8,000-year-old whispers through the heart of a desert, then what else is out there? Waiting to be heard? What if another forgotten tribe still guards the story of the Sahara's first kingdoms, and we've only just begun to listen?